This is the Fox 25 News at 9. Oklahoma City Police are searching for a suspect after a fatal hit and run late last night. Officers say they responded to a call about a body in a street near Southeast 57th Street and South Shields. They found a woman who appeared to have been hit by multiple cars. She was taken to a nearby hospital and later pronounced dead. OKCPD says there are currently no suspects identified and the investigation is still ongoing. Firefighters responded to the scene of a vacant house fire in Southeast OKC this morning. All officials say the structure located near Southeast 15th Street and South Central Avenue has burned several times before. Firefighters took a defensive position as there was heavy fire and smoke on all four sides. That roof collapsed. Luckily, though, there were no injuries. Chaos broke out in the parking lot of the Belle Isle Shopping Center today. Officers say a security guard was escorting an alleged shoplifter outside when the suspect broke away and got into a car. The suspect tried to run over the guard. The guard then shot at the car and the suspect sped off. OKCPD confirms they have located that car and have the suspect in custody. A former Oklahoma Christian University professor was allegedly fired for bringing a gay guest speaker into his classroom. Now that professor Michael O'Keefe and the guest speaker Scott Hale are suing the university and Stephen Eck, OC's, uh, OCU's chief legal officer. The lawsuit claims that de the, the defendants committed a breach of contract and libel among other things. O'Keefe says the university violated his tenured professor rights in the way he was fired. He also says the email published by Eck defending the firing was false and libelous. In a statement on Friday, OC leadership said they look forward to filing its responsive pleading with the court next week. It's been more than a century and a half since we've seen a fight like this on Capitol Hill, but it appears to finally be over. Finally, after midnight and a 15th ballot, they've chosen Republican Kevin McCarthy as House Speaker. Sinclair's chief political correspondent Scott Thuman has this update from Capitol Hill. We'll chalk this up as one of the most intense, tumultuous disagreements we have seen in modern history between members of the same party on the House floor. Republicans really going after each other, even physically, between the ultra conservatives, the moderates, and the rest in trying to determine who should be the Speaker of the House. After a 14th vote failed with Florida's Matt Gates ultimately blocking McCarthy, we saw McCarthy race up the aisle to confront him. Then Mike Rogers was held back after also leaning in to confront Gates. Tensions quickly boiling over and somehow in those moments, the pressure may have proven to be too much for Gates and McCarthy's opponents. And on the 15th ballot, shortly after midnight, they finally granted him the support he needed. There's also reporting by CNN that former President Trump, watching it all unfold, called Republicans while they were in the chamber and pressured them to either stop opposing McCarthy or vote in support of him. Regardless of the fact that McCarthy finally got the gavel, it may very well be a precursor of what's to come for Republicans. Is the split in their party so severe that this is what it'll be like for them to try and pass legislation. At least for now, though, the drama and the stalemate over for Speaker McCarthy and the House, they can now get to work. On Capitol Hill, I'm Scott Thuman. Congratulations. You are now members of the 118th Congress. Members of Congress were sworn in early this morning by newly elected House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. It means lawmakers can now get back to business after days of deadlock in the House Speaker election. The new Congress includes a record setting number of women, as well as the House's first Gen Z lawmaker, Democrat Maxwell Frost. And Congressman Frank Lucas of Oklahoma District 3 was among those sworn in after the Speaker of the House matter was handled. Lucas says in a statement he is honored to once again have the opportunity to serve the people of Oklahoma's third district. This is his 16th term. 
Good evening, folks. Things a little bit chillier today compared to what we had yesterday where we were in the 60s by the afternoon. That cold front last night dropped us down into the upper 40s and lower 50s for highs here earlier today. We had a high of 52 uh, specifically in Oklahoma City. So even though it was a little bit chillier, still a few degrees above average. So every single day so far in 2023 here, all seven of them have been uh, at least a few degrees above average, if not a little bit more than that outside right now, though, things not really feeling all that bad. We got 40 degrees in Oklahoma City. Clear skies going to be a pretty quiet night. Winds going to be pretty calm. Not a whole lot of clouds either. No rain, no snow or anything like that, but temperatures, they will be dipping down into the upper 20s overnight tonight. Now, Sunday, tomorrow, mostly sunny skies. Temperatures a little bit warmer into the mid 50s here across most of the state, but we're going to be even warmer then as we look ahead to the start of early next week. I'll let you know just by how much coming up in just a little bit. Thanks, Ross. Today, the Oklahoma City Thunder and Homeland teamed up to give a local family in need a grocery shopping spree. Fox 25's Katie Arada was there. So, Katie, who did this lucky family get to meet? David, hometown star Lindy Waters assisted the Smith family with their $500 spending spree, and they were so excited for the opportunity to spend time with their favorite Thunder player and get some groceries. This is... I don't know. I'm speechless. It was the best grocery ships trip I ever took. Wayne Smith is a single father to eight year old Aiden and five year old Roxanne. You know, everything I do, I got to remember it's not just about me, it's about them too. Like, they depend on me. And it's, I love it. It makes me keep going. He says he could not believe it when he found out his family got chosen for the $500 shopping spree. I thought somebody was playing with me. <laughs> The Thunder, along with Homeland, not only gave the family a grocery shopping spree, but also a $500 Homeland gift card to take home. I was just, shoot, is it my birthday or something? I, was, <laughs> I didn't know what to say. Like, yeah, I don't know what to do. It's like a holiday, like a dream just for me or something. Mm -hmm. Like it's my holiday or a dream or something. <laughs> So I'm thankful. I'm blessed. I thank y'all. The spree could not come at a better time as inflation continues to hurt wallets throughout the country. Times are tough right now. Times are really tough. If you're a family that is struggling to make ends meet, inflation has really hurt uh, those households. And so to be able to see a family like this, be able to get this sort of experience and the carts full, not a cart, but carts full of food, and see the smiles on the children's faces, it makes a huge difference. This, this will be an experience that will last with their, for their lifetime. Oklahoma native and Thunder Ford, Lindy Waters joined the family for their shopping spree. I haven't had these since I was young. It helps me understand like gratitude and knowing that, you know, just giving back to families that need it and uh, the community as a whole is just, it has a big impact for, for everybody around us. Shopping with Waters was an experience that the Smith family will never forget. The Thunder Cares Foundation is constantly out in the community doing things like this to help Oklahomans in need. If you would like more information on the foundation, go to our website, OKCFox.com. Reporting live in studio, Katie Arata, Fox 25 News. Thank you, Katie. Hundreds of runners took part in the Oklahoma City Memorial Marathon's first training run today. They started the OKC National Memorial and Museum. They started there rather and finished in Scissortail Park for a brisk 5K and a special announcement was made at Scissortail Park after the return of burgers at the finish line. Kerry Watkins, the president and CEO of the Oklahoma National Memorial Museum, says they partnered with Spark in Scissortail Park to bring back the tradition. And Cat Radio continues your mission to help save lives each year by hosting their 38th annual blood drive in support of our Blood Institute. They held the drive at 11 locations around the metro. Because people in Oklahoma, we're all givers and, you know, OBI, what they do and, and, you know, our listeners know that it's a really important thing every year in January is really crucial. And we've kept it that first Saturday in January for 38 years. And donors that gave at that drive received a collector's edition cat t-shirt. And for more information, you can visit the website OBI.org. And students interested in a career in medicine had a special opportunity in Stillwater today. OSU hosted their annual free medical camp, Operation Orange, today for students grades 8 through 12.
we have some students, you know, if they come in and they're thinking about it, this can kind of really pique their interest in it and kind of show them what maybe they might be doing when they're in med school or what they might be doing even after med school. And students had the chance to meet current and former OSU medical students and take part in hands-on dem demonstrations and more. Hundreds of bikers showed up to say goodbye to an Oklahoma National Guardman killed in a crash on New Year's Eve. The funeral for special Mark Calcutt Jr. was this afternoon in Broken Arrow. He had just gotten engaged on Christmas and leaves behind his two-year-old son. While many of the bikers had known Calcutt for years and called him a friend, there's another reason they wanted to be there. It's always a good memory, if anything else, if they can remember back and think, you know, even if it's 10 years down the road, hey, uh, my loved one was a, a well-loved person, not just by us, the family, but by others in the community. He had a, a lot of uh, support and friendship out there. And there is a GoFundMe set up to help Calcutt's fiance and son, and we will have the link at OKCFox.com. A special reunion with Oklahoma Ties held in Muskogee today as some of the cast and crew from the 1995 film The Tuskegee Airmen celebrated nearly 28 years since its release. John Hayes with our sister station in Tulsa shares the special memories of the first all African American Air Force squadron. A time for reflection Saturday. We thought it would be kind of a neat idea to show the movie because it is a very important movie. As Oscar Ray and hundreds of other people look back on the 28 years since the Tuskegee Airmen were brought to the silver screen. The 1995 film follows one of the first black classes of combat pilots that would go on to break barriers while also making a difference in World War II. You must go get four people here that were Tuskegee Airmen and, and one instructor. That's why the city's historic Roxy Theater was the perfect stage for the reunion. Also, it was a, a movie that was shot well, mostly here in Muskogee in Arkansas. Ray says that actor Cuba Gooding Jr., who portrays Billy A. Train Roberts in the film. He's a very busy person, and so he came this way between projects. Was insistent on showing up for this special screening. They're just ordinary men who did extraordinary things, you know. He says the memories and history run deep. You can, you can really feel the passion of the people in Muskogee, and, and I think uh, it's another thing that drew me back here, to be a, to be a part of this. And... You know, we repeat mistakes in history when we forget about the mistakes we made. So never forget, you know, never forget what the Tuskegee Airmen did. But back to Ray. I was a stand-in for Lawrence Fishburne. One of many Oklahomans who answered the call to be a part of the crew as a stand-in. We asked him, looking back on the film's legacy and what's sure to be an unforgettable day, why he thinks the Tuskegee Airmen are so important to the Sooner State where you have uh, Buffalo soldiers buried, you have the Sigi Airmen buried, uh, and you have U.S. Deputy Marshals from the Old West buried. So it's a pretty, it is a pretty big deal for us. And those airmen are buried at the Booker T. Washington Cemetery in Muskogee. And if you'd like to pay your respects, you can also visit the Tuskegee Legacy Exhibit at the Tulsa Air and Space Museum and Planetarium to learn more about their, hero about their heroism. And the Chickasaw National Recreation Area staff is hosting their annual Eagle Watch in February. That The free event starts at the Travertine Nature Center on February 4th. Visitors will then follow park staff by car to the Lake of Arbuckles to look at the birds of prey. Spotting scopes will then be set up at designated hotspots, but officials encourage you to bring binoculars. There will be other activities at the Chickasaw Cultural Center that afternoon. And on this day in history of Oklahoma, the 1892 Osage Coal and Mining Company mine explosion. An improperly set charge caused an explosion that swept through the entire mine, killing nearly 100 and injuring 200. The disaster was the third worst in the country at the time and led to the federal government establishing a mine inspector position for Indian Territory. Much needed help may be on the way to the southern border. Details on why President Biden is finally visiting the border and his new migrant policy. That's next. A Massachusetts mother of three remains missing. 
Anna Walsh was last seen by, the, by a family member around 4 a.m. on New Year's Day. Police say Walsh was taking a ride share to catch a flight from Boston to Washington, D.C. for her property management job. At this point, we cannot confirm that she actually got into a ride share in Cohasset. We can further, um, we, we have confirmed with the airlines, and that's been a challenge, um, that she did not board um, a plane this week. And attempts to track Walsh's cell phone or possible credit card activity have come up empty. Chief Quigley says this remains a missing persons case with no evidence to support anything suspicious or criminal. A Virginia teacher is showing signs of improvement after she was shot by a six year old student at an elementary school in Newport News. Police say it happened in a first grade classroom during some sort of altercation between the student and the teacher. The teacher, a woman in her 30s, suffered life threatening injuries. Officials say she is still in the hospital but is improving. Police are providing limited details on the incident because it is an ongoing investigation. President Biden will visit El Paso, Texas tomorrow in his first trip to the border since taking office. According to the White House, Biden is scheduled to arrive in El Paso just before one o'clock in the afternoon. The visit comes after the White House announced a shift in its immigration policy. National Security Council spokesman John Kirby says the president is looking forward to seeing the border security situation. He's very much also looking forward to getting a chance to, to talk to Customs and Border Patrol agents on the ground who are actually involved in this mission uh, to get their firsthand perspectives of it. And after the visit, Biden will fly to Mexico City for the North American Leaders Summit, where he'll meet with the president of Mexico and the prime minister of Canada. Some residents along the southern border are happy to hear the president will visit after months of asking for more federal help. Fred Cantu with their sister station in Austin takes a look at the influx of migrants and immigration reform. The debate in the U.S. over illegal immigration continues to focus on the number of people trying to make their way here. But local immigration attorney Kate Lincoln Goldfinch says immigration policy should also address why they're coming. We are talking about asylum seekers, people who go through this dangerous track all the way to the U.S. border, particularly the people who travel with children. They're fleeing some danger, and if they're not from Mexico, they're also in danger in Mexico. President Biden is taking executive action to control immigration from the top four sources right now, targeting Cuba, Haiti, Nicaragua, and Venezuela. His plan offers a limited number of them what the White House calls parole here in the United States. But the president and immigrant advocates want to see wider reform to address the U.S. need for immigrants in the 21st century. We have an aging population and we need support of immigrant labor, yet we don't have laws to provide ways for people to come here and work. The plan is to process 30,000 immigrants from each of the four target countries per month, but immigration officials are likely to receive many more applications than slots available. That has many on the border worried a long waiting list will likely continue to fuel desperate actions to get into the country. Hundreds evacuating their homes in India because of sinking land after a temple collapsed and houses and infrastructure continue to, to crack. Authorities are moving residents of an Indian Himalayan town to shelters. A local administrator says more than 60 families have been moved so far. Indian media expects hundreds more to evacuate. The administrator also says the government will give those now without homes $50 a month for six months. A California town learns firsthand about the consequences of climate change. We'll show you the path of destruction left behind from a powerful rainstorm coming up. Another rainstorm is on its way to California. Destruction left parts of Northern California overwhelmed with damage and debris after this week's severe winter weather. Christina Lopez shares moving images and powerful eyewitness video from Capitola in Santa Cruz County. As high tide plus massive waves along with a strong atmospheric river, Capitola was hit with a perfect storm. 
Along Capitola's typically scenic coastline stretches a view hotel guests staying at the Capitola Venetian are accustomed to seeing. Instead, they were greeted with views of mangled debris. These images captured by nature and landscape photographer James Stanton showcase the damage left behind by this week's strong storm wreaking havoc on the small town of 9800. Other images depict the destruction left behind by Mother Nature. Trees tousled like twigs, trash and outdoor furniture strewn about through the hotel's walkways. Nearby parks and businesses along Capitola's picturesque waterfront and pier were hit with crashing waves, portraying a similar story. Small businesses left in ruins as debris and mud littered walkways, leaving behind empty benches. Outdoor dining no longer an option as tangled patio lighting, broken umbrellas, and tree limbs scattered what was once seating. Law enforcement securing the area from tourists and locals to assess the damage, while others grab their umbrella to see just how historic this storm surge was. Coming up, exciting findings in an international vaccine trial proving effective at treating a deadly type of tumor. We are trending much warmer here over the next several days. Temperatures could be in the 60s, even close to 70 in a few locations. Let you know just how warm it'll be here in Oklahoma City. Plus, we're tracking some rain and storms next week as well. We've got all those details coming up for you in just under 10 minutes. Coming up this week on Full Measure. Two years after January 6th, it's become one of the most prosecuted events in U.S. history. We investigate a little told facet of the story, the FBI's heavy handed treatment of some peaceful demonstrators and the agency's role in the event itself. We'll continue our reporting on the green energy crisis with news on the role American natural gas is playing worldwide. Will we have enough to supply our own needs at home? Lisa Fletcher gets the answers. And in a world marked by political division and conflict, whatever happened to agreeing to disagree? An intellectual look at the lost art of dialogue. That's this week on Full Measure. It's a big step in the fight against Alzheimer's. Friday, the FDA granted accelerated approval for the drug Lacanamob. It's one of the first experimental dementia drugs that appears to slow the progression of cognitive decline. The director of the Office of Neuroscience and the FDA's Center for Drug Evaluation and Research said the treatment, the treatment targets the underlying process of Alzheimer's instead of only treating symptoms. An international vaccine trial has proven effective in treating one of the deadliest brain tumors. 331 patients globally were enrolled. One of them is a doctor in Rhode Island. Medical reporter Barbara Moore shows us this medical breakthrough. Uh, one day he had trouble driving home. Anthony Wilson is talking about his husband, Jay Sorgman. This all went down in May of 2015, and that's when Jay drove himself to Rhode Island Hospital where they did a CAT scan. It was noted to have a, a large brain tumor. The devastating diagnosis of glioblastoma, especially hard to treat and deadly. Senators John McCain and Ted Kennedy both died after a diagnosis of glioblastoma. There are microscopic cells left behind, even if you're able to take out um, most, if not the bulk of the tumor safely. On average, patients live about a year and a half after diagnosis. Jay underwent the standard of care, then heard about a new vaccine trial aimed at extending not just life, but quality of life. He enrolled. The data suggest about a three-month survival increase. But what really stood out was the long-term survival, which increased from 5% to over 13%. There's probably just two standard treatments um, with the oral chemotherapy and radiation therapy, uh, but this vaccine approach is kind of novel. What made this study uh, unique is that we took each of the patient's cancers and we put those essentially on ice. In a special lab, these cancer cells were mixed with the patient's own immune cells and re-injected via a vaccine, and patients tolerated it well. This is a very easy protocol, has very limited toxicity that we've seen thus far. Jay not only tolerated the vaccine, Anthony credits it with extending his husband's life by more than five years. During this time, able to um, complete his goal of going to all 50 states, I think that he had a really good quality of life um, until even a month before he died. 
Something to note, like most trials, patients either got just a vaccine or a placebo. But the FDA later allowed for what's known as crossover, allowing all patients to get the vaccine at some point in this trial. That could make the waters a bit murky as they are now trying to get FDA approval, and they're hoping this goes through in the next year. I'm medical reporter Barbara Morse. And with the new year underway, now's the time to supercharge your exercise routine. Man, don't I know it. For those who walk as part of their workout, the treadmill that can get, that can help you get uh, there. Treadmills hold a stop, a sp uh, excuse me, a spot in the top three of most popular pieces of equipment at U.S. health clubs. An industry research group says more than 50 million people were using them in 2017. Workout experts say using the several features of treadmills can help burn those calories a bit faster. Looking to quit drinking in January? Experts say there are plenty of benefits. Alcohol rehab counselors say participating in dry January increases your energy, improves your skin, and can help you lose weight. The best way to avoid drinking is by staying away from any situations where alcohol may be around. Experts warn heavy drinkers against quitting for just a month as withdrawal symptoms could be uncomfortable or even deadly. And Fox 25 meteorologist Ross Muma has your back with tonight's forecast. Ross, it's getting pretty warm for January. Yeah, it's been abnormally warm here, right? We started off, you know, January 1st and 2nd. Temperatures were in the 70s, 60s. The last few days we've been, we've been just a few degrees above average for this time of the year, which is typically right around 48 or 49 degrees. We were in the low 50s here today and outside right now, not all that bad. Temperatures generally in the low 40s, mid to upper 30s in some locations. We got 37 in Clinton, 36 in Woodward, and 32 degrees just to our northwest there in Enid as well. So expect a chilly start tomorrow morning. Temperature is going to be in the upper 20s and lower 30s when you first wake up. So just be mindful of that. Either if you're going to church or maybe just out to brunch tomorrow morning, you might just need that light jacket. But temperatures will begin to warm up rather quickly then by late morning and into the early afternoon. Upper 40s by lunchtime, and then high is going to be in the mid 50s by about 2 and 3 o'clock. But overall, going to be a gorgeous end of the weekend. Sunny skies, not very windy either, and fairly uh, warm temperatures here to end the weekend. Even warmer then as we look ahead to early next week. We got 62 and 63 for both your Monday and Tuesday. Even warmer by Wednesday, but there's also going to be a surge of some moisture up into Oklahoma as well ahead of our next weather maker that's going to be taking its aim to the state, hopefully bringing us a little bit of rain. And I know we desperately need it here. Over 81% of Oklahoma is experiencing severe drought, that orange color down there, and 56% is experiencing extreme drought. Almost all of Oklahoma County is included in that. So any rain that we can get, we will surely take it. And here is that next system coming on in. Developing low pressure system out of the southwest Western corner of the U.S. is going to slide on in here. Very mature system. Not sure really how much rain we might get from this. We will likely see a few showers along the I-35 corridor uh, and possibly some storms in far eastern Oklahoma, some of which could be able to produce wind and or hail. Um, but if this system does speed up a little bit faster, most of those storms could actually initiate right along the Oklahoma and Arkansas border, meaning we really would get a lot less rain. So. We're going to continue to monitor that here over the next couple of days. But again, that's going to come in Wednesday night and into early Thursday morning. Behind it, temperature's going to drop quite a bit, then back down much closer to average low 50s for Thursday, back into the 40s by Friday at the end of next week. But it'll be short lived. We'll be back up and in the mid to upper 50s by this time next Saturday. Welcome back. Many electric vehicle purchases will be eligible for tax credits up to $7,500 in the new year. A provision of the Inflation Reduction Act covers these credits, but some question if anyone will get the full amount. That's according to the Associated Press. The credit is subject to a complex web of requirements. Vehicles must be made in the U.S. to qualify, and there are also standards set on where their batteries were made. And many of us dealing with a bit of sticker shock on our energy bills this season. And if you're looking to make your home more energy efficient, there are ways you can save. We're talking about millions of dollars in tax credits up for grabs thanks to the Federal Inflation Reduction Act. 
RJ Heim shows you what's available. Starting this year, as part of the Inflation Reduction Act, you can get hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in tax credits and rebates on everything from solar panels, water heaters, thermostats, insulation, appliances, even electric vehicles, to name a few. We want to make sure that no Rhode Islander misses an opportunity to enjoy these savings and these benefits. U.S. Senator Sheldon Whitehouse from Rhode Island worked on crafting provisions as part of the Finance Committee. Save money for consumers to reduce carbon emissions and to create jobs. Now this is a 10-year credit rebate program with a maximum cap each year. First year of the program, you wanted to put a heat pump in your house. In the second year, you could access more money to put solar panels on your house. And then the next year, you could access more money to put an electric vehicle charging station in your house. Even if you're not a homeowner or you're on Section 8, property owners and neighborhood groups are eligible to partake in structural energy efficiency provisions that will lower gas and electric bills for renters in the long run. Rhode Island Energy um, is looking at really more critical infrastructure to enable a clean energy uh, future for all of the distributed energy resources out there as well as the energy saving opportunities that we want to enable for our customers. No college football to discuss tonight with the national championship game being the only one left on the ballot there on Monday night. But we do have some Big 12 basketball to break down for you this evening. We'll get into OU and OSU's games from today. Plus, we also had some Saturday NFL action to get into. I've got the highlights coming up right after the break. This is Fox 25 Sports. We had another big Saturday for Big 12 basketball today. Oklahoma State was taking on the sixth ranked Longhorns who just beat OU last weekend, but also they just fired their head coach Chris Beard amid domestic violence charges against him. So associate head coach Rodney Terry led Texas into Stillwater this afternoon, but the Cowboys were looking to put them on upset alert. Halfway through the first half here, John Michael Wright hits the three and gets the foul, earning himself the four-point play. Longhorn guard Tyrese Hunter, he comes back at him like a duck in bathwater and hits the floater over the Cowboy defense. OSU continue to work around, though, in the second half. Wright hitting his second three of the night right here. And then Caleb Boone, who led the Cowboys in scoring with 16 points on the day, going for the baseline cut and dunk right there to keep it close. The Cowboys had it within four, just two minutes left in the game, but the Longhorns slam the door closed and shut and end up pulling away to win it 56 to 46 over Oklahoma State. Now let's fast forward a few hours later for the second leg of our doubleheader for Oklahoma State against Texas. The Cowgirls this time were hoping for a better outcome than their male counterparts. They had a solid day of shooting to keep pace with the Longhorns, hitting over 51% of their shots from the field and eight different threes in the game. This one, though, is going right down to the wire, and Lexi Keys hits the massive corner three to give the Cowgirls a four-point lead, and that proved to be just enough. Oklahoma State holds on against Texas and wins it in a shootout, 86-82. to now we're going to transition to the Sooners, who after losing their last two games against Texas and Iowa State, they were looking to finally get another dub in the win column. The Sooners, they were tipping off against the Red Raiders this evening, and they did a nice job of passing the rock and finding the open man all night. Crosscourt pass to Sherfield, who hits the mid-range jumper, and then Uzan from underneath the basket to Sherfield at the top of the key for the long-range tray, and he sinks it. Now here comes C.J. Nolan off the bench. He's hitting a three of his own in the second half right there. And then Tanner Groves getting a dunk, and he is pumped after this one for the Sooners. But former Sooner, now turned Red Raider, Davion Harmon, led the Red Raiders back in this game late in the second half with 23 points on the night. But this one, it couldn't be decided in regulation. So we head to overtime. Now, thankfully, the Sooners, they stave off the Red Raider comeback and hold on to win it in overtime, 68 to 63. And we've also reached week 18, the final week of the NFL regular season with a lot still on the line for some teams when it comes to making the playoffs and where they'll be seated at. Lucky for us, we had two games to entertain us this evening. 
Patty Mahomes, he was ready to go in the Chiefs and Raiders game in Sin City, Las Vegas. Just check out this toss from Mahomes down the sideline to Justin Watson, who takes it down inside the five yard line. Great play there. And then just three plays later, Mahomes takes a snap, rolls left, and he shuffles it through a group of Raider defenders to Jarek McKinnon for the touchdown. Just another example of plays that seems like only Patrick Mahomes seems able to make. Now we fast forward just to before halftime, and here comes Kadarius Toney with the jet sweep around the left end and into the end zone for the score, making it 21-3 at the half. The Chiefs, they continue to roll offensively throughout the second half and end it with a 31-13 win with their 14-3 record. They secure themselves their seventh straight AFC West division title and, more importantly, the number one seed and a first-round bye in the AFC playoff standings. And then our second match of the, of the night was a win and in scenario for the Titans and the Jaguars in the AFC South. Former Clemson Tiger Trevor Lawrence, he was hoping to come up big and make his first playoff appearance in the wild card round next week. But let's not forget the Titans still have King Henry in the backfield. Now, I just had to show this highlight here. Sending Rayshon Jenkins back to his mama with a stiff arm, telling him, sit down, son. Awesome play there. Titans score the following play then with a pass to their tight end, a conquo to get them on the board. Next drive though for the Jags and they finally get into the end zone with a 25 yard touchdown pass from Lawrence to Christian Kirk. And at last check, Tennessee is currently up 16 to 13 with, my, with nine minutes left in the fourth quarter. And Buffalo Bills safety DeMar Hamlin took to social media today, thanking fans for their love and support. The posts were made to the 24-year-old's Twitter and Instagram accounts. Doctors say Hamlin is making significant progress since collapsing on the field on Monday Night Football's game this previous Monday. And Hamlin went into cardiac arrest in that game after making what appeared to be a routine tackle in the first quarter against the Bengals. Doctors say he continues to breathe on his own, but still does remain in critical condition. And there's your sports on a Saturday night. This story is right up my alley. Adopt a kitten and get a free flight. No kidding, just look at the little guy. Frontier Airlines is offering free flight vouchers to people who adopt one of three kittens from the Las Vegas Animal Foundation. And if an adopter steps up to take home the names Delta or Spirit, they'll get two vouchers worth $250. That's a total of $500 per pet parent. Now the person who adopts the kitten named Frontier gets four flight vouchers for a total value of $1,000. That sounds like a deal right there. The vouchers are good to use through the end of this year. A man becomes a social influencer on the internet, sharing things a dad would teach his children. Eric Johnson shares his story, Dad, how do I? This is the story of a guy named Rob. Rob is a father of two, his kids have grown up. The truth is, anyone can be a father. The real trick, the important thing, is to be a dad. Rob Kenny knows that better than most. Okay. So a couple okay. years ago, Rob had an idea. He'd record a couple how-to videos and put them on YouTube and see what happens. You know, I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. I don't, I'm not an expert in anything. Okay. So we made a video. The first one was how to tie a tie. And we take the fat one, that side, right? And we go around the front. We go around the, the back and come through. The idea was to help people figure things out who maybe didn't have a dad to help along the way. I try to, you know, walk alongside people and feel a little empathy for them that, hey, if you know, nobody's ever shown you this, hey, it's, it's okay, and, but let's just learn. Today I'm going to show you how to shave. He made another video, how to shave your face. He called them, Dad, how do I? Okay, that's about all there is to it. An amazing thing happened. Almost immediately, the videos were wildly popular. Rob Kenny, regular guy, had a runaway viral hit on his hands. 
It was like, oh my goodness, what is happening? It terrified me, honestly. I, you know, I consider myself an introvert, and I was actually crying. That uh, <laughs> I was, I was literally sobbing, going, "What happened to my life here?" What happened is that people who had fathers but not dads were drawn to the videos. They were moved by them. They filled the void somehow, scratched an itch. I finally realized it was resonating on a different level when I thought that I was just showing people how to tie a tie, and I've got people crying watching me tie a tie, right? I, I thought I was just, <laughs> it was a how-to, and really it was resonating on a level much deeper than, than I had planned. It kept growing and growing. He reached a million followers on YouTube, then two million, and now? Uh, yeah, 4.3 million on YouTube. <laughs> followers mean sponsors, sponsors mean money. Rob just quit his job selling office supplies. He's now a full-time YouTube star. Hey kids, so great to see you again. And his is a decidedly modest approach. He sets up his shoots himself and always opens with a dad joke. Before we get started, I do have a dad joke for you. So what must you do before you enter a cookie eating competition? You need to sign a wafer. Ah, so, anyway. Okay, so or a bad a joke, depending on how you look at it. The production isn't slick, neither is Rob, and that's the charm. How to change a tire, how to iron a shirt, how to make French toast, all delivered with a certain sweet, encouraging, aw shucks hominess, like a dad. An easy way to remember this is red, dead. So we're gonna connect the red to the red on the dead battery, okay? I just have to be myself, I think, is what it comes down to. I, I you know, that's what I do on my channel. I don't try to <laughs> pretend I'm somebody else. I just got to be real. And I don't want to get out of my comfort zone. And sometimes, um, like and dads so do, he talks about other you. things, uh, important things. Go ahead and get up, put yourself out there. If there's something that you're a little scared of doing, uh, I just want to encourage you to do it. Rob Kenny understands the ache of not having a real dad to learn from and talk to and be loved by. His own father abandoned him and his siblings when Rob was 14. His mother was unable to care for the family, so Rob lived with his older brother in a trailer for two and a half years. And all those things he now teaches people how to do on the internet, Rob had to learn those things by himself. The main reason I even share that at all is to try to encourage other people not to live in the past and try to, you know, try to be able to um, forgive and move on because playing that victim card and for me it took me a long time to forgive my dad but once I finally did boy there was freedom waiting for me on the other side make sure you wear some gloves because I think it's so much better to go okay I just gotta let that go and now I can start building my own life and then you just put a little bit of flour on your on your surface here so when he explains how to make Christmas cookies or a hundred other things he's really reminding us of something very important something that he learned the hard way. All right, so we'll throw those in the oven. Anyone can be a father, but the real trick... Thanks for watching, Merry Christmas to you, and God bless you. ...is to be a dad. We've got a gorgeous Sunday here across Oklahoma. Sunny skies and temperatures in the mid-50s. Back into the low 60s then for Monday and Tuesday before we see our rain and storm chances begin to increase by Wednesday night and into early Thursday morning. After that, things quiet down here once again and also cool down as well with temperatures back into the upper 40s by next Friday.